Cam really does age you 10 years. Is that what they say? I realized I picked up the cat and I wasn't even filming. So you can't see him. I know I hold like this because it's huge. I, I, maybe you haven't seen Benny in his full glory, but he's a big cat. I love you to camera. <laughs> okay, let's go feed you. Hello, bibliophiles. My name is Jill and oh, my coffee's back here. Excuse me. If you'll recall, and you may not, um, I won't hold it against you. One of my goals for the year was to be able to um, be more careful about what I'm picking up and what I'm buying this year uh, because I'm trying to read down the books that I have bought over the past after over the past pandemic, the past pandemic, as if there's been more than one, over the pandemic. <laughs> There's still cat hairs. This is the problem when you have a pet. You're never free of their fur. So let's go through the books I've bought this year. Of the ones I've bought, I think I've read about half, which I'm really, really pleased with. And I think I've read all but one of my pre-orders. So again, very, very pleased with myself. Pat myself on the back for this. Um, if I have a review of any of these books, I will link it down below. Let's talk about the first two books. The only two fiction that I've bought and read uh, this year. The first is Small Things Like These by Claire Keegan. Second is The Girl Who Slept With God by Val Brulinski. And I bought this one because Rick did a review of it. It was his first five star book of the year. And then I just needed <laughs> to read it after reading it, watching his review because it made me, uh, it was like the perfect review to sell me on it. Like, good job, Rick. And when I read this, I really enjoyed it. I didn't give it a five star like Rick did, but I did really enjoy it. And I thought, um, for a, this is a debut novel and I don't think she's written anything since or I say not that I know of and a very 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 good debut novel it says some interesting things about parenting I thought so I liked that a lot small things like these is a short story that I really enjoyed um, my friend Alexis from my book club was like she, every time I talked to her she was like you gotta read this book bought it read it it's a short story about um, set in Ireland in the 1980s about um, uh, a man with f three or four daughters uh, has a great life and then his upbringing kind of leads him to I, I can't say anything else about it because it's very very short but it's very good and I'd recommend it except that I recommend getting from the library because this small little book was $27 that's too much money but this is a very good book another very short little pamphlet that I bought and read was Three Cups of Deceit by John Krakauer and this was to like expose or like talk about what is the words what does it say here? It says how Greg Mortensen, humanitarian hero, lost his way. And the reason I wanted to read this was because Greg Mortensen wrote the book Three Cups of Tea, which I remember I read in like 2004 or something when it came out and I loved it. Like really, really loved it. <laughs> and I remember hearing that there was some like controversy around it. I don't know what it was. And then I saw that John Krakauer had written this and I had just read another one of his books and I thought, okay, well, I'll pick this up. This is a very short little like 100 page pamphlet. And like there's like the proceeds go to support um, Stop Girl Trafficking Project at the Himal American Himalayan Foundation. So I thought, well, you know, let's let's donate to that and also read what happened with Greg Mortensen to figure out, like, learn more about the scandal that I had, like, heard about peripherally. So yeah, this was uh, informative. <laughs> I've read so many memoirs um, and so many, like, essay collections. <laughs> this is Golden Girl by Reva Lair, and uh, this was something that was everywhere on booktube last year, I think. And I saw it was in paperback and I decided to pick it up because I really, this is, so this is like published on like high quality paper because it's full of, it's full of artwork, which is like gorgeous in here. Um, but because of that, it's very heavy and I didn't want the hardback. <laughs> so I saw it was in paperback and I decided to pick it up because this is like, a, the art in here is so beautiful. It's like a collector's book. And uh, yeah, I like this a lot. Um, I had some problems with it, which you can watch in my review of it if you want to see that. Um, but yeah, I really liked it for the most part and the art is just stunning in here. If I had realized this book was coming out this year and I just obviously didn't pay attention, but this would have been my most anticipated book of the whole year and this is Run Towards the Danger by Sarah Polly and this is my best book of the year. I can't imagine anything will beat it. I have a full review of it, um, which is, I think it's out already. If it's out, I'll link it down below. If it's not, keep an eye because it'll be the next video. Um, but this book is exceptional and I just need everyone to read it, please. Another memoir I read and loved is Did You Hear Mammy Died by Seamus O'Reilly. This was a book that I had um, pre-ordered from a Canadian publisher and then like that publisher pushed it back by another like six months and I just like didn't want to wait anymore because I've been out for like a year in Ireland in the UK and I decided to pick up my own copy of it um, from the UK because I really wanted to read it and I'm glad I did because I really, really enjoyed it. This is an excellent memoir. It's very funny. Also, just to let you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but um, I write reviews of all the books that I read on Instagram. So if you want to get like full reviews of these books um, individually, 
it's on my Instagram so you can follow that down below. Um, so I just posted this one so that's why <laughs> I thought of it. I also posted a review or sort of review of The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green which was a book that I listened to on audio this year and I listened to it during a very particularly stressful period of time and this book was like just a bomb for the soul and so I listened to the audio it was incredible and I decided to go pick up a hard copy so I could underline and make notes in it because I think this is a book that I will return to very often so I love this one. The last red one I have is the, ooh, the, <laughs> the 90s by Chuck Klosterman which is a book I pre-ordered and was fairly disappointed by for the most part. I mean it's okay. I like Chuck Klosterman as you know if you've watched my channel at, at any period of time you know that I like Chuck Klosterman a lot but this book to me felt like it's, also, it's about the decade of the 90s of course as the title tells you um but it is it feels recycled. It feels like a lot of his ideas from other books were kind of repackaged and put in here and so it wasn't bad. It just was like I feel like I'd already read it all from him so a bit of a bit let down. And now we can talk about the books that I have not yet read and they're almost all fiction. I've been in a real non-fiction kick this year in case you <laughs> couldn't tell from that last stack. Um, two books I picked up recently just I went for a walk and ended up at the my local bookstore just ended up there. How did that happen? Um, I picked up My Volcano by John Elizabeth Stinsey. Stinsey. Uh, this is a Canadian book by a non-binary author and I, the reason I picked it up, I was looking at the back here, because the reason I picked it up was one, I'd seen this cover kind of on the, on the internet and something about it is like both, I both love it and hate it and that kind of like a mixture of like adoration and revulsion just like drew me right to this cover. On the back it says for readers of Karen Te Yamashita who I've never read and Haruki Murakami and fans of David Mitchell's Cloud Atlas and Oko Takarzik's Flights, My Volcano sets the mythic and absurd against the starkly realistic attempting to portray what it feels like to live in a burning world stricken numb. And so the premise of this is like there's like a like there's like a volcano that come that shows up in Central Park basically. I'm pretty sure it's like a it's like a dystopian type of novel. Um, it's a, a pre-apocalyptic pre vision following a global and diverse cast of characters. Uh, this <laughs> what sold me on this was the Haruki Murakami and the mythic and absurd against the starkly realistic because it made me think of After Dark by Haruki Murakami which was a book that I loved and I haven't really found anything that kind of did the same, has had the same effect on me when I was reading it. I thought this might do it. So I picked this up and I will of course report back because you know I'm on a mission to understand what is happening to Canadian literature. So I'm gonna um, give this a whirl hopefully soon because I am incredibly intrigued by it and I'll report back. On that same trip I picked up The Naked Don't Fear the Water, An Underground Journey of Afghan Refugees and another cat here. Uh, this is by Matthew Akins and I don't know why I think this is a Canadian book. It is not. I don't think it is. I don't know. I have it in my head that it's a Canadian book but like nothing about the back says anything about Canada. Anyway, this is the story of a journalist, Matthew Akins, who follows a friend of his who is an Afghan refugee trying to escape uh, Afghanistan and find a new place to live. So it says here, in 2016, a young Afghan driver and translator named Omar makes the heart-wrenching choice to flee his worn, torn country, saying goodbye to Lila, the love of his life, without knowing when they might be re reunited again. He is one of millions of refugees who leave their homes that year. Um, I've seen this kind of around. I think it's gotten a lot of recognition and uh, I thought it would be interesting to read this now uh, in the wake of all that's happened with Afghanistan in the past. Gosh, what is time? You know, in the in, in the recent past. <laughs> and um, I've seen it. It's gotten some, some great praise. So I was curious about this and looking forward to reading this as well very soon. I got myself a copy of Seating Arrangements by Maggie Shipstead. Maggie Shipstead is the author of Great Circle, which was one of my top 10 books of last year and it's now long listed for the Women's Prize. Hopefully it'll be shortlisted because I loved it. Um, and this is just a beautiful cover and I figured, I think this was her one before, yeah it was published before Great Circle and I'm excited to read this. This is about a family. Uh, it's about a family drama during a wedding on a beach I believe and that's all I have to know. It's also relatively short. It's like under 300 pages. 291. Right under. Yeah I love Great Circle so I'm looking forward to reading more from Maggie Shipstead. Then I picked up a copy of what might be my favorite cover. Um, just look how beautiful this cover is. There's like all kinds of like sushi and like if you look the, the more you look the more you see. Uh, this is called Yume by Sifton Tracy Anapare I think is how you pronounce it. 
Um, she is a Ghanaian Canadian writer and then she also lived in Japan. So this is about a character, Sybil, 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 uh, teaches English in a small city in Japan. Um, and it's about her wanting to stay in Japan, but also like not really being like trying to find like work and stuff like that. And I think there's also like a bit of like a, um, a magical element to it or perhaps like a mythical element. So we, we shall see, but it's a long book. It's a Canadian, uh, Canadian writer, which is, um, again, as I, as I mentioned, I'm on the mission <laughs> to find some good Canadian literature and it's set in Japan. I love books set in Japan. So this one is what I'm very curious about. And I have meant to pick it up a couple of times, but I have read so much this month that I need to kind of, I think, uh, take a bit of a break, which is something I never thought I'd said, but I never thought I would say, but it's been, uh, my brain is tired <laughs> because I've read so much. Then I have a small pre-order. This is, how, how small this book is. This is The Employees by Olga Ravin, translated by Martin Aitken. And I just want to say this about this book. I pre-ordered this because I had had a lot of discussion about it between my friend group and like people online. And if I had realized, truly, if I had realized that this was like told in vignettes, I would never have bought this book because I don't care about vignettes. And um, I, in fact, I don't really enjoy them. <laughs> so I read the first like maybe 15 pages of this and was like really annoyed. <laughs> like I did no research, I just ordered it. Um, I will read it because now I have it and it's incredibly short. Uh, you know, it's like a pamphlet. How does this even count as a novel, guys? I, like. I'm sorry, I just don't love short books and I don't love vignettes. So this, I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, I will read this. Maybe I'll totally have a different opinion, but you know, right now this feels like the one mistake I made in purchasing. <laughs> Something very exciting happened to me this weekend, friends. Um, it was the first library sale I was able to volunteer at again for the since before the pandemic. So over two years and it was so nice to be back, to be back volunteering and browsing the shelves. And of course, I picked up a couple of things while I was there. The first, where is it? I picked up a copy, it's somewhere on my shelf over here, I think, of French Exit by Patrick DeWitt, which is a book that I loved and read. It's a Canadian book. It's an amazing book. And I loaned it to a friend and I haven't seen her <laughs> since uh, before the pandemic. Who knows how far we're getting back. So I decided to pick up a new copy for $1.50. I mean, no problem there. Um, I also got a copy of Riverine, which is a memoir by Angela Palm. And this one, I don't know much about it, but I know that um, Mercedes read it. I think she liked it, but it's a book that I've, I've had like on my mind for years and I saw a copy of it there. So I decided to get it. The The true gem of this of this whole haul from, uh, from the library sale, the three books I bought, was Mary Lawson's book, Road Ends, because my first exposure to Mary Lawson was last year when I read uh, A Town Called Solace, which was long listed for the booker. And I had never really, I think I'd heard of Mary Lawson because she wrote Crow Lake, which I'd heard about. Um, but then this was there and I'd never heard of this one. And I thought this is a great opportunity to just try more because I loved, loved A Town Called Solace. It was a five star read, just loved her writing style. I don't know what this is about, let's see. Road Ends brings us a family unraveling in the aftermath of tragedy. Sounds like a me book already. <laughs> Edward Cartwright struggling to escape the legacy of a violent past. Emily, his wife, cloistered in her room with yet another new baby, increasingly unaware of events outside her bedroom door. Tom, their eldest son, 25 years old but home again, unable to come to terms with the death of her friend, of his friend. And capable, formidable Megan, the sole daughter in a household of eight sons, who for years held the family together, but has finally broken free and gone to England to try to make a life of her own. Oh, I'm gonna love this book, I know it. One of my pre-orders from this year is Swollening by Jason Purcell, a friend of mine who is the co-owner of Glass Bookshop in Edmonton. And some of you may know that I'm very picky about bookmarks, but this bookmark from Glass Bookshop, I love it. I think it's very, very cute. Um, so I, <laughs> I messaged them and I was like, I just want you to know, I approve of your bookmarks. <laughs> um, but this is their poetry collection that came out just last week, I believe. And I haven't had a chance to read it yet, um, but I am so excited to. I've seen snippets of it online. Rick also did a review of his poetry collection, which I will link below. I actually met Jason through Rick, like that was how the connection was made. And so, yeah, it's a beautiful circular moment and I can't wait to read this. This is next on my list as soon as I finish the long tome, which I'll tell you about in a second. Uh, I will be absolutely reading this and I'm so excited to get to it. I've seen snippets of these poems online and there's some incredible language in here. I can't wait to read it. My only other impulse buy is uh, Tana French's The Searcher, which I picked up just kind of on a whim. 
as I was out with some friends, I was like, oh, I might want to read like a mystery. I do love like a, a, a small town mystery set in Ireland. Can't be bad. I will be going on a road trip in the next couple of weeks. It's just a short road trip, but I will be listening to this on audio because I think it will be very good on audio, but I do have a hard copy in case, well, you know, what, what, if I, what if I listen to four hours of it on the road trip and then I want to finish it <laughs> before the end, before I would drive again. So I think I'll bring it with me <laughs> in case I'm like, super into it and want to read it but um i'm really looking forward to reading this the last one is one i'm currently reading and like it came to me in a dream uh, this is poppy show by leonie ross this is in in the uk it's this one sky day is the title and this is shortlist or longlisted for the women's prize and i was not super jazzed at the women's prize longlist this year nothing really spoke to me except this one because i had so ever since i saw this One Sky Day come out, the cover was really compelling to me. And then I learned it was called something different in the US or North America, which is like, why? Why do, why do publishers do that? Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> and I had been kind of casually looking for a copy of it. Like if I was at bookstores over a couple of months, I would kind of look for it. And then I had a dream, weirdly, where in the dream, I just kept like, the, it was just repeating over and over and over again, poppy show, poppy show, poppy show. And so, I woke up and then I got an ad on my phone uh, for this book. It was on sale for like $15. So I bought a hard copy for $15 of this book. It's long listed for the Women's Prize. And I just started it today. Um, I'm 10 pages in. I have no feelings about it yet. So let's see if my dreams were right. And this is like a new favorite book. I'm very pleased with my haul. I feel very proud of myself for buying books that I'm actually reading and books I'm really enjoying, except for the employees, if only I had known. <laughs> have you made any buying goals for the year? And let me know if you have um, met them or if you have completely abandoned them and what kind of books you've been buying this year. I'd love to know in the comments down below and I will see you guys soon. Bye.